Hi everyone. Welcome back to Mom Meets World. I'm Angela Yusis, founder of Radiant Heart Center, Virginia. And I'm Kathy Desai Seltzer, owner of Yana Infant Massage. And today we have a very special guest, Lindsay. Special treat. <laughs> <laughs> My birth doula, Lindsay from Sunflower Wellness. Yes. And so Lindsay does all kinds of things that she's going to talk about, um, but we really wanted to share with you all the value and importance and significance of a birth doula. So should we just dive right in? Sure. Yes. I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. So Lindsay, tell us a little bit more about your business and the myriad of services that you provide. Sure. So uh, my business is Sunflowers Healing and Wellness. I'm located in Alexandria, uh, right on uh, Mount Vernon Avenue, which is quickly becoming known as the wellness epicenter <laughs> of Northern Virginia. Uh, yeah. I started the business uh, about 10 years ago when I was expecting my second child uh, and I was starting to explore alternative healing modalities and I learned about hypnotherapy from my midwife and it was a life-changing experience and I really wanted to uh, learn all that I could about it and I started using some of the techniques that I was uh, was benefiting from with my friends and my family and then after that child was born I decided that I wanted to really dive right in. So um, I learned hypnobirthing as a pregnant person and became certified to teach it as well. I got certified as a master hypnotherapist and then later on as a Reiki master teacher. So those are three things that I love to do. A couple of years into my business, my childbirth students were asking me to come to their births and I felt like, no way, I couldn't possibly do that. And I ended up going to one birth to do Reiki for a student who was being induced. It happened to coincide with a, a, a tornado, not a tornado, a tropical storm here. Wow. And we got locked into the hospital. So, oh, so yeah. I ended up staying for the duration of the labor and I got the bug. <laughs> so you were literally forced to do those parts. Yeah, kind of, of yeah, birth a birth doula, yeah. yeah. The universe. The universe yeah, provided yeah. the opportunities. Um, I did feel like training was important, so I didn't take doula clients just yet. Right. I wanted to get trained first. So I did that a couple months later and I um, that's all she wrote. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. yeah, my husband joined me in the business a few years later as a life coach. So those are the services that we offer: um, life coaching, Reiki, hypnotherapy, childbirth education. Primarily the hypnobirthing program, which I'm happy to talk more about as well. Sure, yeah. But I do teach childbirth for everyone, okay. and uh, and of course birth doula services. Yes. Yes. And we've recently added postpartum doula services as well. Oh wow! Yeah. Nice. That's mm -hmm. great. Yeah. We just interviewed a postpartum doula and we're talking about how, you know, in so many other communities and cultures around the world, uh -huh. people don't have to hire a doula because it's built into the community into the, and, and the family the structure. Family structure, exactly. Um, but how it really is so vital for yeah. especially our American families and yeah. that are lacking yeah. that support. And particularly when parents have to go back to work exactly. soon after. Yeah. In many families, dads are, are able to stay home for just a few days. Right. And the person giving birth often has to go back to work within two to three weeks. Um, unless you have the means to be able to take more time, yep. um, many people live paycheck to paycheck and it's just not feasible for them to take you know, five months off like I did. Right. I feel very grateful that I was able to do that, but I know that that's not something that most families um, can do. Yeah. yeah. And so, given all of those things that you do, you must have a lot of training and certification. Sure. So what kinds of things did you do you have to do what you do? So, um, let's see, beginning with my first certification, which was in hypnotherapy. That was um, that was a six week program every day, nine to five, sometimes longer than that if we got into a, a really exciting practicum, everybody wanted to stay and yeah. learn a little bit more. Um, that also um, gave me the skill set that I think is really important to teach hypnobirthing. Um, that was the next class that I took. So hypnobirthing was a, a four-day class where we learned the basics of childbirth and some basics around hypnosis and how it works and how different people might uh, benefit from it. But I felt like my background as a hypnotherapist really aided me in being able to um, understand that program more deeply and to serve more families. The core curriculum teaches 
20 or so techniques. Wow. And if you don't have a background in hypnotherapy, you just teach those techniques on face value. Yeah. With my background in hypnotherapy, I'm really able to help each of my students find a way to use those techniques efficiently and effectively. And that might mean modifying them. Um, just a little or a whole lot. <laughs> and we do that often. Can you tell us some of the benefits of hypnosis? Yeah, so hypnotherapy helps people to achieve goals, um, to get rid of, of unhealthy or unhelpful habits, or limiting messages that you know we all harbor from time to time. The, the thing that someone hurled at you on the playground as a child, child. that you can't forget, <laughs> right? And it influences how you think and feel about yourself and the kinds of life choices that you make based on the limitations you've placed on yourself because of that one message. So as an example, hypnosis can help a person um, pull that message up, empty it out, or reframe it, and then bring on new positive changes. Uh, interesting story, when I started uh, my business, I thought I'm gonna limit my, my customer base just to women experiencing um, childbirth or who've had trauma around getting pregnant, staying pregnant, being pregnant. And my first client, was a professional boxer who needed to make a weight class. <laughs> yeah, so that initial client really helped me to open my eyes to the ways that hypnotherapy can help people in general. Um, I was a client of hypnotherapy. That's how I learned about hypnobirthing and it's really how my second career got started. I have a background in economics and affordable housing consulting, <laughs> which I did for over a dozen years before making this career switch. And it's it's been wonderful to be able to bring these skills and techniques to um, to families, to individuals. I work with people um, as young as infants all the way to my oldest client is an 80-something year old alum of my college. Wow. Yeah. I could see hip the hypnotherapy being really beneficial to helping women who are either trying to get pregnant, yes. kind of, uh, as you said, breaking down or reframing limiting beliefs, mm -hmm. um, as well as any phase of pregnancy, yeah. postpartum. Yes. I actually saw Lindsay, so I did the childbirth, we had her set up as a doula, and then I also asked her to do the hypnosis because my baby was free, and I said, maybe there's something that I'm thinking that, and feeling that's holding her in place, you know, mm -hmm. whether it's fear of hospital, and so yeah. we also did hypnosis, yeah. so I agree with you, because you really helpful. Yeah. And I appreciate so much how open you were to trying all of those yeah, different like, things. <laughs> you know, we work together as a hypnobirthing instructor yes. and student, as a hypnotherapist and client, yeah. and also as a doula uh, and yeah. client. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I think most people, in the United States at least, when we find out that our baby is breech, which means the baby is head up instead of head down, typically the guidance that we get from our caregiver, who is usually an obstetrician, is, well, that's okay, we'll just schedule you for a C-section at 39 weeks. Yeah. And most of the people who come to me are people who are wanting to avoid unnecessary interventions. And sometimes a C-section is necessary with a breech baby, yeah. but there are other options as well. Yes, absolutely. There are medical procedures to turn the baby, there are complementary uh, modalities like chiropractic and acupuncture, uh, homeopathic remedies, physical positions and maneuvers that can help unlock the tendons and ligaments that keep a baby locked into that breech position. Yeah. But the number one most effective way to turn a breech baby is through hypnosis. According to a study out of the University of, I think it's Vermont, hypnosis was shown to be 83% effective at turning a breech baby. The, the thing that's most commonly recommended is the external version, yes. which has a success rate of somewhere between 50 and 70% based on practitioner skill. But hypnosis is never recommended, right? right? No, you just need to of, know I about really, it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, in my first pregnancy, heard of hypnobirthing, and uh -huh. I thought it was too woo-woo, yeah, and yeah. pretty woo-woo, so I was uh -huh. like, okay. <laughs> I know, but then um, in my second pregnancy, I had watched The Business of Being Born, it was all about celebrities who share what their birth plan or hope yeah. was and then what actually happened and so yeah. we're talking about hypnobirthing. Uh -huh. I was like, let me rethink this. Uh -huh. And I did learn hypnobirthing for my second. Okay. It was my most serene and calm yeah. birth. Yeah. Um, I was able to have him in the tub. His mm -hmm. birthday is tomorrow. Oh, seven. wonderful. Um, Congrats. But I, it was funny because 
you know, the affirmations yes. just kept showing up. I yes. wasn't even thinking that they were in there. Yes. Um, so it's really powerful. Yeah. So one of the things that we ask hypnobirthing students to do is to listen to those affirmations every day, yes. all day if they can, and just let it play in the background. Yeah. But the, the effect of that is similar to what we accomplish with hypnotherapy, okay. which is a reprogramming of the messages that the mind um, holds on to and creates beliefs and values around. So if we can kind of implement those, uh, or imprint those messages, as positive messages that are going to positively influence how you're thinking, how you're feeling, yeah. ultimately how you behave. Uh, it makes such a huge difference. Yeah, we, we talked a lot about conscious pregnancy in a recent uh -huh. episode, and it just, you know, hypnobirthing aligns perfectly well. With yes. That. You know, it's like meditating, it's changing your thoughts, it's knowing that what we think affects how we feel. Yes, and absolutely. That directly affects baby. baby yeah, baby. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was uh, I was reading an article recently about the composition of amniotic fluid yeah. and it brought some parallels. I don't know if you're familiar with the studies out on the composition of tears and how the chemical composition and structure of cells within tears changes if they're happy tears yes. or sad tears. Yeah. Amniotic fluid is the same. Changes it changes yeah. based on the emotions that the person carrying the baby is experiencing at that moment. Yeah. And so I share that with my students, not to worry anyone or make them feel badly if they've experienced you know, difficult Structure, emotions, yeah. but to let them know that right now, in that moment, you're modeling for your child yeah. how to respond, right? right? Do we allow ourselves to be overcome by the factors that are out of our control in yeah. our environment? Or do we talk to that baby and tell them, you know, your parent is experiencing something really tough right now and here's what I'm doing about it yeah. to make myself feel better. And You don't need to worry about it because I'm protecting you by doing these things. I love that on the show we keep having different people that are saying the, the same, same thing that we are, which is so important <laughs> because it's true. Yeah. Um, you know, but it validates that um, message yeah. that there's different people in different practices that are saying the same thing. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. It is. Yeah. It's really amazing to see the transformation. You know, my class is a five week long class okay. and, uh, and it's usually successive weeks. Um, so week one, I ask people, you know, what was your journey getting here? You know, and, and that gives me a little insight into where they're coming from. It's like our check in to start the course. And without fail, I always hear from, um, you know, a pregnant person, well, I, I'm quite frankly terrified to give birth. And I always, without fail, hear from a partner, well, I'm here because, you know, they said I needed to be here. <laughs> and, and my response to that is, that's fantastic. This is the place you need to be. Right. Because by the end of this next five weeks, and without fail, they always are feeling so much more confident and hopeful and excited and I just I have to wonder if all pregnant people were offered that that option you know to feel hopeful and excited and enthusiastic about pregnancy and bringing a baby into the world and the labor process itself how much more happiness would we have and from the partner's perspective oh I'm just here because you know they said I had to be the techniques that we teach in hypnobirthing are universal you know, these are techniques that are, I call them lifestyle skills. And most of my students find there are lots of ways they can use these techniques outside of childbirth. Yeah. So partners benefit as well. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So the birth doula. Uh -huh. I, when I called you, I think I actually stumbled upon your website learning about hypnosis okay. for my husband. And then I saw the birth education. I must have been a couple, three months pregnant. Then mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I should look into this. I haven't really thought about birth education. And then... You told me about the doula work, and I'd never even heard of the word yeah. doula. And so, why? What is a doula? And yeah. Why should a family have a doula? So, a doula, the the term itself originates from from Greeks, Greek language, and um, and it basically means servant or slave to um, to a woman, okay. right? And so. The way we've kind of appropriated the term today, um, at least in the United States, is a birth doula is a person who provides information, physical support, emotional comfort, and and, and is kind of a liaison in the birthing uh, environment. We help pregnant people and their families navigate pregnancy and birth. Okay. 
a postpartum doula would do the same thing, but for the postpartum period, um, helping people learn to trust their intuition with regards to parenting. And I do that with regards to pregnancy and birth. And what led you to this work? So what brought me to, the, or what attracted me to doula work is a story that has evolved a little bit over the years as I have um, become more aware of how my life experience has shaped who I am. So what I used to say is I had a really um, disappointing birth experience with my first child and I wanted something different for my second. And so I interviewed uh, midwives who had similar experiences to me. I felt like they'd be able to relate and I would trust them in ways that I maybe wouldn't trust someone who didn't have a similar experience. That experience was a planned home birth that um, resulted in several days of labor at home and ultimately a hospital transfer and a C-section. I hadn't read the chapter in the book on C-section, so I was really not prepared for that. Uh, but at, over the past several years, as I've started to reflect on why that experience was so disappointing, it became clear to me that I had an imprint when I was four years old on what birth could be. And that imprint was being present when my younger sister was born at home, surrounded by family, in my parents' bed. And so, as a four-year-old, I learned that birth is normal and natural and at home and it's a family experience and that after the baby comes out everybody gets in the bed and snuggles and that's what I wanted and I had an experience that was a polar opposite from that and that's why I was so disappointed with that experience. So that imprint has helped me to see connections and parallels for my students and my, my doula clients now. And I, I don't for any second think or wish that everyone would plan the, the birth that I planned or that they should subscribe to my values on birth. But I realize how important values are to each individual family. So part of my role as a doula is to help my families, my clients, find what's important to them. Consider their imprints. Are those imprints positive? Are they sending good, healthy messages around pregnancy and birth? Or are they harmful? imprints that are creating fear are the decisions that they're making fear-based decisions or affirmative choices and once they can understand that the choices that they make are really strong confident choices and they're in alignment with their intuition they're in alignment with their their personal values and the things that are important to them in their family and as a doula i set all judgment aside and support whatever those choices are for some of my clients, it's a planned C-section as soon as they can get it because they want no part of labor and that's their truth. And for others, uh, you know, it is as unmedicated and, and low intervention as possible because they've realized that that's an okay thing for them to, to want. Yeah. Most of my clients are somewhere in the middle of that and planning a hospital birth with you know, low intervention but open to it if they need to have it. That wasn't what I chose, but I feel confident in being able to support those families too. That's awesome. Yeah. So yeah. there's some misconceptions. Uh -huh. <laughs> so a question I get often um, around uh, hypnotherapy and Reiki is, does it really work? <laughs> and my response in my head is, no, I'm just here to steal your money. <laughs> doesn't work at all. But I understand also that those questions are coming from a place where uh, you know, what we learn about hypnosis in American society is, you know, someone on TV or on stage with their dangle thing and they're making people cluck like chickens and <laughs> a funny story about that for another time. Uh, and that's really not what I do. You know, the, the course that I took to be certified as a hypnotherapist offered a module on stage hypnosis. I don't intend to do stage hypnosis or any kind of hypnosis for entertainment value. So I didn't take that module, but other people do and no judgment on them. That's entertainment and people benefit from that. We all need to laugh, right? Yes. Um, but the work that I do is very therapeutic. I'm not a licensed counselor or a mental health therapist. Um, so I can't claim to be you know, a, a counselor, but the work that I do helps people reach therapeutic goals. And I think once they understand that hypnosis is a normal and natural state of mind, that at no point during a session am I in control of their mind, that they always maintain control, and that it's not what it looks like on TV. My clients rarely talk during sessions. And that's what most people, I, I feel, coming in for the first time, 
that's what they mostly have trepidation about is what am I gonna say it's gonna be embarrassing <laughs> what if she's laughing at how I sound and, and you know the reality is I'm the one doing most of the talking okay. with you know first couple of sessions um, another thing that that people often misunderstand is the timeline um, with traditional therapy and not a knock on it it's definitely a great place for it you commit to going you know every week or every two weeks indefinitely right, yeah. right with hypnosis the way I do my sessions I ask my clients to commit to coming one time and to commit to having a phone call about a week or so after that at which point we'll reassess do we need to keep doing this work or are you well on your way to reaching your goal one of my missions at, at, at Sunflowers is to empower my clients on their own healing journey. So that means that I'm not going to do all the work for them. I'm not going to hold their hand all the way, but I'm going to help them learn how to build their own tools so that they can achieve the goals that they've set and feel an ownership of that achievement. It really helps to, um, to bolster their sense of ego. And I use that word ego in, in a positive way. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Lindsay, can you tell our listeners why do you think people need or could really benefit from a birth doula? Sure, I think that's a great question. And, you know, a birth doula, in addition to providing an evidence based service that helps to reduce the use of unnecessary interventions, we increase maternal satisfaction with the birth process. We help partners to feel involved, informed, and comfortable with the birth process. And the, the, the overall effect of that is that when you go home with your baby or when everyone leaves your home, if you've had a home birth, you feel content. And what a better way to start off your family. Feeling satisfied, feeling content, looking back on the process and feeling like, I did everything that I could to affect the outcome that I wanted. I have clients, not often, but occasionally, who, you know, we had to move pretty far away from the preferences that they wanted, but because of the support of a birth doula, they were able to look back on that experience as something that was positive in their life. Um, and I think that that's, that's a wonderful way to start off your family. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we believe, and we've said previously that the labor experience really does impact motherhood. It does. You know, how you enter it. And yes. I think it's so important to have someone offering you that support because yeah. a lot of women, a birth doula can guide a mother through yeah. maybe thinks she's too hard on herself and doesn't mm -hmm. see from the right perspective. Yeah, yeah. So that they can see that they tried everything as mm -hmm. best as they could. Mm -hmm. You know, that they were in control and that there was a different plan, but, yeah. you know, they were supported yeah. and they did as best you know yeah. as their bodies or minds were able through yeah. the experience. I've been supporting a family whose baby came several weeks early and uh, and I think the mother was just as you said like not seeing um, the benefits the values that her body was bringing to her in in producing this baby a little bit early she ended up developing a pretty significant complication after the baby was born several days after the baby was born and and it occurred to me Perhaps that was her body winning, right? Yes. She kept thinking, my body failed me, but maybe your body was winning in knowing that there was a thing that was coming that was unavoidable. And so Save it's baby. safer for the baby to be yeah. out than right. in, yeah. safer. That's beautiful. Yeah. What challenges do you see a lot of families experiencing during pregnancy or during the birth? Ah, that's a great question too. I, I would say that most of the challenges that my clients experience are due to choice of provider. Um, it's largely not due to their health. It's not due to um, you know their baby's health. It is due to the um, the environment of uh, authoritative medical um, coercion that. Um, that is quite prevalent in our area. Yeah. We have uh, we have a number of really phenomenal out of hospital birth midwives and some phenomenal in hospital birth midwives. We have some phenomenal obstetricians in this area. We also have some who are. I got a poker game to get to, a vacation I'm scheduled for. Uh, my own provider for my first birth wanted to schedule my induction uh, because a week before my due date because she was going to be out of town the week that my baby was due and wanted to be sure that all of her patients had their babies in advance. And 
I did no research on that provider because she'd been my gynecologist since I was in junior high school. That research is really important and, and I think, and I tell my students this, don't just ask, may I, can I, is this allowed? Ask, how often does this happen? Because a doctor or a midwife from ever will tell you, oh sure, you can move around a lot during labor, we encourage that. But the fact is, 99% of their clients, their patient load, has an epidural and they're confined to the bed. So if that's the sum total of that person's experience, how helpful are they really going to be to you if your goal is to move around, right? We have providers who have a very low use of epidurals. And not that an epidural is you know, something you need or don't need, it's really an individual choice. But if you don't want one, find a provider who specializes in that. If you do want one, find a provider who specializes in that. Yes. Yeah, so I think that, that those are the challenges that I see um, is, is a lot of times pregnant families are needing to, um, you know, to move upstream against the current. They're, they're fighting against this machine yeah. that, um, that they didn't need to be fighting against and how many other snowball problems does that create? Right. Right. And I, I think that's a great point, you know, based on my experience, mm -hmm. having a doula is there as an advocate, is that as a liaison, because you, especially if it's your first time, yeah. you don't know everything that can happen or yeah. will happen or that they'll offer. And so, for example, you, you know, told us there are um, birthing classes about Pitocin and mm -hmm. how that can be really harmful or, you know, when I did end up having to have a scheduled C section, mm -hmm. you said, oh, you can do gentle cesarean. And so mm -hmm. if I hadn't gone through that yeah. birthing classes, I would have just had the experience and yeah. been probably more traumatized or yeah. more disappointed because, you know, like the other thing is they want to tie your hands down and you mm -hmm. said you can ask to have them free mm -hmm. and I didn't. I said, okay, as long as you don't turn your eye, touch your IVs. It's like, it's that simple. Yeah. Like, why don't you just tell yeah. them? Like, you can keep your hands free. Just don't yeah. touch your body when you're doing that. Right. So, um, a birth doula can be great no matter what your experience is going to mm -hmm. be, yeah. where you're going to have it. You know, you're going to have all the unexpected things happening. So, it's good to have a doula there to mm -hmm. advocate for you. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's valuable. That advocacy piece is really it's, big. Yeah, because you give up yeah. your agency. You're like, yeah. well, you're the professional. You went to med school. I'm just a mom who's having a baby, right? And it really isn't just empowering. Yeah, yeah. I, I tell my clients uh, you're kind of on the fence about whether a doula is necessary. Sure, it's not necessary. You don't need a realtor to buy a house. You could buy a house. You could figure it out. You could get some books from the library and figure out how to do that. Yeah. But a realtor makes that process so much smoother. Yes. And they advocate for you. They help you figure out what your options and choices are. They help you make those decisions. And that's what a doula does in the birth world. Do you, so, so to summarize, Lindsay, uh -huh. about birth dueling and birthing. Yeah. So I just I feel very strongly that each person and each family deserves the opportunity to um, to to blossom and to grow. And and you touched earlier on the transitions of, of a person to parenthood. And it cannot be understated how impactful the labor and birth process can really be. You know, regardless of the kind of preferences you have around birth, it matters. It absolutely matters. It matters for the baby. It matters for the parents. It matters for any siblings. It matters for the entire rest of their experience walking on earth. How can people find you? Greg, my online, my website is www.sunflowerswellness.com and note that sunflowers is plural. If you have had a birth doula or have considered having one, please comment below and share your experiences with us. We'd love to hear. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. We will share Lindsay's information as well. And like they say, ain't no hood like a motherhood. One day I asked the burning question to a doula who I knew. Hey doula, I wondered, can you tell me what it is you actually do? She smiled and answered quickly in a voice lyrical and unrestrained, and I felt privileged in that moment to have a miracle explained. A woman leaves her body, she said, in the midst of childbirth, and journeys to the stars somewhere high above the earth. There she finds the soul of her baby, she cradles it carefully, then the two souls, joined together, float softly back to me. I have two jobs, she smiled. From the bedside where I stand, I help mothers learn to fly and catch souls when they land.